In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's favorite podcast for fitness, health, and entertainment. Your favorite podcast. We answered uh, fitness and health questions. So we have people who listen to the podcast or watch the podcast on YouTube. And then they ask us questions on our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. We pick the best ones and we answer them. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about our lives. We tell stories. We talk about studies. Today's intro portion was 45 minutes. After that, we answered the fitness questions. By the way, if you want to get some timestamps on what we talk about throughout the whole podcast, you want to fast forward to your favorite part, go to mindpumppodcast.com. But for the rest of you, if you want to enjoy the whole thing, it's the best yeah. way to, to eat Mind Pump. Listen to the whole thing. Yeah. Nose to tail. Start from beginning, Ooh. go all the way to the end. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a breakdown right now, right? We open up by talking about the reverse Goldilock move that Adam did. Uh, up in Tahoe. It's not a sexual move. Uh, this had to do with bears. Yeah. Yeah, bears. I hate those bears. Rawr. Then we talked about barbecuing outside here in the Bay Area. If you live in Northern California and you walk outside, mm. uh, be careful. Don't breathe too much because mm. there's a lot of smoke. You'll get a nice rotisserie. And so I was, I was thinking about barbecuing outside and just naturally smoking my meat. Mm. Um, now, the meat that I'm talking about is from Butcher Box. So Butcher Box delivers grass-fed, high-quality meats to your door. So if you want to eat meat that's higher in the better um, uh, essential fatty acids, omega-3s, has better nutrient profiles, better for the environment, animals that are treated better, but you don't want to spend a ton of money like when you go to Whole Foods, go to ButcherBox. They they locally source it, deliver it to your door, eliminate some middlemen so it's less expensive and the best quality. And because you listen to Mind Pump, we have an exclusive offer. Mm, we're going to hook you up. Just for you. If you want to check that out, go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Check out the offer on the page. We think it's going to blow your face off. Ooh. Then Justin talked about his crazy weekend. He got evacuated from his home because he lives in the Santa Cruz Hills. Mm. Uh, so we talked all about that. Can I get a win? I talked about the baby shower that we threw over the weekend for uh, my wife. She's having a baby soon. Yeah, congrats. That's exciting. Then I talked about one of my trainer friends who is now moving to the online market and is finding extreme success. Now, if you're a trainer um, and you want to do that, one of the best places to go and get educated to learn how to do that is NCI. They give... They have so many different courses and certifications on helping you become a better online trainer through nutrition coaching, through working with people's hormone imbalances, food intolerances, and much more. And NCI, the owner of NCI, is a good friend of ours, so he gives us the best discounts and deals offered anywhere. Okay, so if you're a trainer, go check this out. By the way, if you're not a trainer and you want to learn some free stuff, go check this out too. Just go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump. There is a ton of stuff on there for free. Free courses, free classes, totally free just for mind pump listeners. And then we finish out the intro by talking about college versus experience. Mm. Then we got into the fitness uh, questions, fitness and health questions. The first one is, what is your opinion on gymnastics rings? The next I question- opinions. This person says, you talk a lot about performance goals over aesthetic goals. What are some good performance goals I should focus on? The third question, if you were to write a full body workout routine, what primary, primary exercises belong in there? What would you build the program around? And the final question, this person wants to know what we think of boot camp workout classes. Mm. Uh, also, this month, all month long, one of our most popular MAPS programs, MAPS Performance, is 50% off. Now, this is a muscle-building, fat-burning, metabolism-boosting workout program that utilizes traditional exercises and non-traditional functional exercises. In other words, not only are you going to get great results, but you're going to have a lot of fun while following this workout. Also, by the way, for all of you out there who don't have access to a full gym or to barbells and, and, barbells and, and squat racks, you can actually follow MAPS performance with just the dumbbell. So if you have gym access or you have a full home gym, you can follow it as we originally wrote it. If you just have dumbbells, there's a mod included for free that takes you through the whole workout with just dumbbells. Of course, in the program, there's exercise demos. So you log in, you look up the exercise, and we teach you how to do the exercise perfectly. We also tell you how many reps and sets to do of each exercise. There are phases within this program. The last phase is a lot of fun. It's explosive training. If you've never done explosive training, but you want to reap the benefits, 
I highly suggest you check out Maps Performance. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S-G-R-E-E-N.com. And then use the code GREEN50. That's GREEN50 with no space for the discount. And it's T-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. Hoo-ha. Very light reviews this week. We only had uh, like eight total reviews, uh, but we well, do have two winners. Well, look, hold on real quick. Doug. Listen, if you want a really, really good chance at winning a free Mind Pump uh, t-shirt, because the chances are really good, go to our Facebook page, leave a, uh, a positive review there, or go to iTunes um, and leave a positive review there. And then what Doug does, he goes through and he picks the ones that he likes the best, and then you win a t-shirt. It's really easy. Yes, indeed. So the winner for the Apple Podcasts is Just In Case. And for Facebook, we have Rebecca Mensa. The both of you are winners in the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Adam, we're on. Yeah. Now you can tell me, finally, uh, what ooh. the hell... Happened. We have an on air sign. Everybody. Yeah, what the heck happened, dude? I've been waiting to hear this. Well, first, let me tell the audience what I'm talking about. So Adam goes up to you know Tahoe to stay at the at the house, and he's he's up there with some family, and uh, we get a video sent to us in our group text. Yeah, and the video is Adam. He's got obviously angry. You can hear it in his yeah. voice. Yeah. He's got the yeah. angry tone. Yeah, and he's walking into the house. The door is open, and there's. <clears throat> Protein bars on the ground, wrappers. Yeah, yeah. Then he keeps walking in. There's like meat sticks and jerky all over the place. Yeah. Organic Valley wrappers everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. You see, and then he points to the wall. There's like a, looks like scratch marks. And then you realize a bear broke into our house. And it looked like there was food every. First of all, there's a very muscular bear somewhere around our house now. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. it looked like he got into all the supplements like and everything. all the. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? So the the funny part about all of this was that it wasn't until uh, late that night, so afterwards, where we're sitting by the fire <clears throat> and my mom, like, you know, I got this is the first time all of my family's been together up there. And so. You know, I got a big family, so everyone's like, nah, talking back and forth. And my mom finally, like, silences everybody and says, like, son, son, I want to hear the bear story. Like, tell me how, what happened and how that went down. And, like, So they, they weren't there when you walked in? Not my saw- mom. Okay. So what happened, and, and what I didn't realize, that was what was funny about this whole situation was, I actually didn't realize how fucking scared I was until I retold the story. So my adrenaline was, when it was going so much because of the situation. So I pull up with Katrina and right behind me is my sister and my sister has got four kids, Mm. you know, and three of those kids being under the age of five. So she's got three little ones. I've got Max and Katrina and we all pull up at the same time. When we pull up, our side breezeway door is wide open. So right away, I'm like, oh shit. I jump out real quick. I tell Katrina, hold on, wait. And I go running up to the door. As I walk up to the door, I see that there's a peanut butter jar that's completely empty that's outside and then right at the right at the edge of the door is you know the protein bars like you're talking about and so I look back and I yell at my sister keep the, don't let the kids come in yet hold on and I tell everyone to hold on and I start to walk in and so I'm retelling this story and as I'm retelling it like I'm getting like scared telling it but I'm like oh shit I was fucking scared I didn't realize I was scared cuz my adrenaline was going so much to make sure that all the kids and everybody was safe but as I'm walking in, here's the thought that's going through my head. We have a we have like what I thought was the super alarm. I mean, Doug has has put a sensor in every room at every angle so that like if a if a freaking raccoon crawled in there, it should go off. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going, why is our alarm not going off? And I know it was set. And I'm thinking to myself as I walk in the first door and I creep around the corner, like this motherfucker could be in there right now. Like, this looks like it's fresh. What could have happened? And maybe the alarm hasn't gone off. So as every time I come around a corner, I'm, like, looking back over my shoulder. I'm looking to the side. like, And I'm, like, tiptoeing in to be as quiet as I possibly can. And every time I come around a corner... Yeah, because what you want to do is surprise a bear. That's well, smart. <laughs> I, well, I certainly don't want... And here, my brother, I'm telling the story, and my brother, who's grown up in Truckee, and he's like, 
why didn't you get in the kitchen and just start banging some pans? I'm like, yeah, that's a real good idea. I thought about that. Start slamming some pans together while I'm in the middle between him and the door getting out. Like, that <laughs> yeah, is not- where is he going to escape? Exactly. Yeah. That's why, so why I'm creeping. Yeah. I'm not. You don't want to come in yelling when you're that you're the, you're coming in the <laughs> exit. <laughs> you know, you're gonna run right by you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's like freaked out. Run right. over me, right? So that's what's going through my head as I come in. I'm coming around each corner, and every time I come around a corner. There's more like food and stuff. We had. Did he get into the creatine? He got into everything. He got yeah. the creatine. Yeah. So we come. I'm gonna. I, I swear, man. There's war. When I came in the laundry room, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but I had just brought up. So Paleo Valley had shipped two boxes to us: a box up there and a box to uh, to the studio. And we had probably 40 pounds of beef jerky in this big old huge Costco size Dude, bag. Score. And he ate half of it. So he literally just probably it's like an elk butt. He made it to he made it to the laundry room. Probably sat down, ate you know twenty pounds of beef jerky, and then he made his way into the kitchen and he opened up all of our pantry jo- doors, pulled out all the, the the syrup and peanut butter and all that stuff. Then he went into the pantry room. How did he open that? So here's what this is the problem. I, I'm like tripping out on First that. First of like, all, how did they learn that? He didn't just the, the their ability to open shit is crazy. Like yeah. there was a paw. He opened up the freezer door and closed it. He opened up. <laughs> he opened up the oven door and closed it. What? Yes, dude. dude you can well, see these little, bears have evolved. We need to. We need to pause for a second. Okay, a bear gets into our house, doesn't set the alarm, and is opening and closing things. They have really upped their game. Yeah. So what is yeah. going? Probably on? Probably slept in your well, bed. And so check this out. So I'm standing in there. I called Doug. Your porridge. I called Doug first because I'm tripping out why the alarm doesn't go up. Well, I called Doug. I get Doug on the phone and I'm cursing about what what I'm looking at. And then the alarm goes off while I'm in the middle of the kitchen. So it's going off for me being there. And now I'm like, Doug, shut the alarm off. I'm telling him to shut the alarm off. And I'm like looking everywhere. There's fucking footprints that go up our stairs. No. Oh. Yes. Are they big? Are they big paws? Yeah, they're big paws. Oh. So I left one in the pantry so you guys could see. You know, So there's a, there's a paw print where he went. We should he, frame it. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I know my brothers. I'll leave that. It's a cool little thing to leave on there. I'm like, okay. So I left it. A little warning sign. Right. <clears throat> so... There's pa- the alarm. Doug sh- shuts the alarm off, and I'm like listening intently. Now I realize like I'm I've been in here for about five or six minutes, and I've got my family all out in the driveway. So I'm like, okay, I'll finish doing the house, looking over the house after I go tell them to stay in their car. Like so, I go running back outside, tell all the kids get back in your car, wait until I've like surveyed the entire property before you guys come out because I don't know if this thing is somewhere in the house yet. So. And this is where I, the, going up the stairs was by far the scariest because there's paw prints that go up the stairs, and uh, I the alarm's already been set because I've been walking around. So I'm thinking, is this fucker like upstairs? And you have no idea what you're going to see when you yes. turn the corner. So I'm like creeping up the stairs, and you know the the wing where we have the the room on the left and the room on the right yeah. up there on that side. So that's where he that's where the paw prints go, and I go up there, and I'm like. Definitely scared to death to look left and look right. Now, and do I, you have a plan? Like, if I, I see a bear, I'm gonna so I, I'm gonna jump and so this Spider-Man. is no, this is what I'm thinking. Like, but even though I, it's probably not a great plan. I'm like, okay, I'm so deep into our house and I'm up these stairs, and you know, if I see him and he sees me, like, I, I my thought is. I'm trying to peek and see him so I can sprint back out before he sees me. Because mm-hmm. if I see him and scare him, it's basically a race between him and I out the door. Mm, yeah. Like, I don't know if I want to get into that race. Yeah, so bears are pretty fast. That's my that's my thought is like, okay, can you I- have a pulled hamstring? Yeah. <laughs> <Forget that. laughs> yeah. So I get up there, no bear. He's not in the house. I che- ended up checking the entire house. <clears throat> He's not there. Come back in, tell the kids, come. But I mean, there the, the house was just a disaster. And paw prints uh, all over. He shit in our dining room. Oh. He did shit. Yeah, he shit twice oh, in our in our, di- in our dining room. Big old, was it a big old dang. shit? It actually wasn't as big as what I it thought it would be for a bear. So they were like little like mm. yeah driblets, little woodland yeah, creatures I think he, in there. I yeah. think uh, twenty pounds of beef jerky gives you a bit of diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he, got con- he got constipated from the protein bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh. or, or, the, or the plastic that he took down with it. You know what I'm saying? So man, I'm, I'm assuming that even the- shit in our house, man. <laughs> yeah. Man, what an asshole! But uh, he came back, dude. Wait a minute, he came, he came back. Okay, he, what do you mean he came back? So that was that night, right? This is not cool. I don't like this. So uh, got everything all cleaned up. Now I'm like, and I'm telling my family, like, you know, he scored big, so he's coming back. Yeah. Like it, it, when a bear go, goes somewhere and he eats till he's full, 
and leaves, leaves food. Like there was still yeah. plenty of food there. I mean, he ate that much food and then took off. That means he was satisfied. He went back home and he probably slept. And he, when he's hungry again, he knows where he's coming. So there was this like, okay, there's a good chance he's coming back. So I'm like constantly telling everybody, you know, put everything away, lock everything up. So uh, it's like, I don't know. I want to say it's like nine o'clock, nine or 10 o'clock at night. And I'm cleaning up after dinner. And we had, uh, I, I did uh, beef short ribs, you know, and I'm cooking for 13 people. So I had like, you know, 14 pounds of short ribs. And so that was outside what, on the grill. So, well, yeah, that was, was what like the calling card. Right, right. So yeah. he, and then I, you know, threw, took out the trash and everything. Well, I'm on my like second load of trash and I go and I open up our trash door and the fucking backside is open up and the trash can's fucking open and it's taken out. Well, how did he open? He can open the lever and what? open the door on the bare door in the back. You son of a bitch. So he opened that all up and it, I must have just, we must have just missed each other. I, and so, and now it's pitch black outside. By the way, we, we didn't until this weekend have any like real good flashlight. <laughs> so I got my iPhone light and I'm like <laughs> walking outside. It's right in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, with my little iPhone light trying to look around and see if the, and you can hear shit, dude. So he's either oh, moving no. on or he's dragged. So, and so we had trash dragged. All over our fucking property. Oh my god! That I and that I'm picking up in the middle of the night with an iPhone flashlight. You know, <laughs> so Bro. yeah, dude. So I can't believe though that this fucker is this smart that he can open up the levers and and they get know it. how to open car doors, dude. And so I talked to my cousin. So my 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 cousin lives up there, and he said that they're very smart. They know how to open doors. They open car doors. They know how to peek into a window to see if there's food before they make their entrance, and apparently this one doesn't knows how to not set off an alarm. Yeah, yeah. what o is open peanut butter jars? Yeah, what? Yeah, the peanut butter jar was completely not destroyed. It was yeah. unscrewed, like they and, unscrewed and they and that. licked clean inside. Well, so what he said is, is if you he said if you live up here, That's you have crazy. to have either the electric mats mm -hmm. or the wire that goes around. He goes, you have to do that. Especially if they find food in your house. Well, once they, yeah, figure it out. Because bear break-ins happen all the time, apparently. Mm -hmm. So they, they do this all the time where they break in. and. So I actually, I have my sister going up there <clears throat> on Tuesday to do some stuff with Doug with the ADT to make sure all the alarm stuff is, I mean, that's the first, first and foremost, our cameras need to be armed, which they were not armed. And our alarm needs to be make sure it's set perfect. So like even a, a small animal crawling or whatever like that would go off. So obviously- Something wasn't set right. So ADT is, you know, getting an earful from us for sure. And so I'm going to have her do that. And then the other thing they say is ammonia. So you buy where the where the trash stuff is. If you pour ammonia on the ground, he won't come near it. Really? <clears throat> yeah. The, the scent of it will, will keep him will keep him off of it. So I'm going to have her dump ammonia like near It's pissed all around there. Yeah. Because there, there's nothing you can do about the, the trash, because the trash is on the outside part of the house in that little, you know, bear box or bear room, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we have a, if you have a bunch of people like I did and you have ribs and things like that, boy, I'm sure that smell. Well, you got yeah. to lock it, right? <clears throat> and then unlock it when the garbage guy comes or whatever. Well, that's the problem, right? We can't deadbolt it on, like when we leave, like I left. Mm -hmm. So if I deadbolt it, then the trash guy can't take the trash out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this like... Maybe there's a special doorknob or something that you can put, you know what I mean? Something that's not easy to open. Well, I think the, the key is... Because they don't have opposable thumbs, right? <coughs> so he's going <laughs> to... He's just going to use claws. Well, know? we, ha we have we have this like little, mouth, this little <laughs> latch thing on there, so we'll see, if, we'll see if that helps. I mean, the cameras are armed now, and like Doug and I all morning have been like, so a, a possum was going or sniffing one of the cameras, and it went We need off. to talk to that bear. Does yeah. It, yeah. Can you talk out of him? <laughs> yeah, you could talk out of him. Good. I want to tell him something. But <laughs> yeah. I see him walking in. I see yeah. you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, it makes me... What, it makes Not me, today, bear. When I heard that he didn't set off the alarm, I pictured... What was that movie with... Uh, was it Catherine Zeta Jones? Back oh, in the day? and so Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where there's a entrapment, just is there, inching is it, his way it? underneath the lasers. Yeah, there's like yeah. like, like alarm lasers, and he's like, uh, you, know, like you know, getting in and squeezing in, doing cat burglar gymnastics, yeah, like, like cartwheel, bear yeah. wheels, you know. <laughs> He's going through. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. He's a nimble bear. Yeah. Speaking of barbecue, did it catch fire for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how I like it all charred. Like did it that. really? Yeah, it did a little bit. <laughs> the, the bottom caught fire? Yeah, it gets a little fire and then it gets going. So yeah, when you when it's the meat... know how to work the flames. Yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Yeah, what do you do? I mean, I let it roll, dude. That's I like my meat charred like that. 
The flames didn't get too big? No. No, you just got to manage it. Like Justin said, you just got to- you know, How do you manage it? You move the meat over mm. when it's like going like crazy right there. Then I slide it over the other side and let the flames come down, open it up so it gets a little bit of air and it starts to calm down. And then you go back to that side. Like, Dude. Well, yeah, watch your eyebrows. Yeah, well, yeah, speaking of barbecue, because yeah. you guys have been talking so much about like uh, you and Doug have a smokers. Yeah. And you smoke your meat really well. Mm. So I thought I'd uh, just barbecue outside yeah, here in San Jose. Yeah, throw it out in the backyard. <laughs> just, I, got my, I got the you know the the, the butcher box ribeyes or whatever, and I, I'm, I'm like, should I barbecue outside? Because the air quality out here- <laughs> Enhance the yeah, smoke, smoky flavor. It says on the it's thing- It's not like adding to it is going to do much. Dude, because I went outside in the morning. This is when, you know, it was when the fires first started happening, and I saw like, look like white soot everywhere- and it smelled like you're right next to a campfire, yeah. you know? So I was joking with Jessica. I'm like, should I barbecue outside? I mean, I'm not. Yeah. We're going to get like a smoky flavor <laughs> to the steaks because of, because of all this. Oh, anyway, yeah. speaking of the fires, dude, uh, <clears throat> Justin, yeah. you've been on my mind all weekend, dude, because you live up in the in that area. Yeah. So what's yeah. the deal? It's, right, it's, right in the thick of it. Is Felton on fire? I mean, what's the deal? It's starting to get like, um, well, it, it depends on, on the wind still because it's only like 10%, I think, uh, contained at this point. It was 0% for the for the last few days. And so we were just like, oh, man, this there, there's no way like our town's going to survive this. Uh, so like Boulder Creek is a little bit further up. There's uh, Bonnie Dune. And then it all kind of came down from San Mateo and it all sort of to kind of converge uh, into our little like valley. So once it like hits it, yeah, it's like this this cluster of like three different fires that are going to oh, converge. Three? I knew you had yeah. at least two that were like coming together at your place. So there's three different there's ones. There's three. The, the yeah, fires, the top. they have names like, you know, CZU well, complex CZU's and ours, yeah. because there's, they're all, it's multiple fires converging. That's yeah. what's so crazy about this. Yeah, it's gnarly. It, it was like, we were trying to see like when we really had to evacuate because um, like it, to me, it didn't, like we, we felt like we were like far enough away from from where it was all kind of the path of the fire was going but we got the orders to evacuate and so how do they give you the orders is it by uh, on your phone it was on the phone and then we actually saw like um uh, like we got emailed and we got like notified uh from the sheriff's department and everybody else from uh down in the county of santa cruz like this order that went over it was basically our phone and then also our, our computers uh but uh we we were like just Okay, what are we gonna do? Because what do you pack? Like we we'd pack the night before of just like if we had to leave for like a couple days, and okay. we we just tried to like grab like all the essential things that had any kind of like meaning or value to us, and it, you know at this point it was like there we started to see all of like you said the soot, but but it was also like burnt leaves and burnt like debris was like falling down like black like debris was falling on our property on our house like oh, wow. all littering our entire neighborhood uh with stuff and in the, the the smoke was so thick it was starting to get like scary so we we're like well i guess you know now's the time so we we got like all of our stuff and like so i have two dogs and then two kids and and it, it's just like a lot of stuff to consider and so i'm like trying to pack all the stuff in my truck and then in courtney's car and we still like right now are like, oh my God, we don't have this. We don't have that. We don't have this. Like I left all the stuff there and the, like we we have to be out for a few weeks. We don't even know. What a back. weird feeling it must be. Uh, curious to like what was going through your head to leave your house knowing that whatever you leave may get burned to the ground. Like right. how do you, I, like I'm, I'm going through my house right now in my head. Like, yeah, like that's, I I'm going like through like, so close. Yeah. Like what confused. do I grab? Right. Yeah. Like I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. First, definitely the stuff that's really expensive. Like cause that's got a great value to it. Okay. Yeah. Things that have memory, like I photos, like what the hell do you it's leave? It's gotta be stuff you can't replace. You know, that's what I would think. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's lots of the pictures and like I had hard drives and stuff that I had kept all like the digital stuff on. Uh, we grabbed that, but like, you know, jewelry, things like that, like um, stuff people gave us for like our wedding. And uh, but for the most part, it was just like a few clothes, which I was pissed. I didn't grab like all my clothes because like I'm like, I, I am running like basically we we're going up for the weekend. You know, we're going to go like camping or something. That's like what kind of clothes I have left. And I can't now they've blocked and barricaded everything to where like we were going to Sunday. We're going to come back and try and grab more stuff. 
but we can't. Like, we can't even go back in. They've blocked all the different roads. And I'm actually glad they've blocked all the roads because get this shit, right? So if you haven't lost faith in humanity yet, like, uh, there's people there that were looting oh. everybody's stuff, like, in our community. What? Dude. As we've all evacuated and lost their homes and everything. And there's people in there, scumbags, taking stuff from people. So they've actually caught a few of these people. What the fuck? And put them in jail. And so there's an order now, like, if anybody's Put in them there. in jail where the fire's coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you you, you want to go back in there and steal pe- shit from people? What a what a I'm low like, life. Dude, I have, I don't know, man. Like, I I have such, like, a uh, different perspective of people, uh, you know, through, like, everything that's happened this year. It's just, like, I can't believe, like, the kind of shit people, like, will do. It's so evil. That's crazy to me. Yeah. So, so they said a few, you might have to, they said for sure, or you might have to be away for a few weeks. Uh, yeah, no, they're, they're like, we don't know because um, they were also, like, anticipating this, there was another lightning storm that... Obviously, so the listeners know it was a lightning storm that happened, uh, you know, like last week that that set fire to everything and, and uh, went over this mountain range and started to like all over the place, just kind of caught fire and, and all kind of came. And we had like the perfect weather storm for all this. And then the winds kind of came and it was hard. And so uh, that's what caused all this stuff. Uh, but they were afraid that there was going to be another lightning storm that was going to happen. And then, you know, uh, it was going to start all over again and just like reignite the whole thing. So uh, I don't think that it, it uh, I don't think it made that much impact. I think it went a little further north. So mm-hmm. hopefully that didn't affect it. But I mean, and we're spread so thin because there's fires all over California. So it's like, where do you get all the resources? Uh, but I got to shout out like to like, LA that came up like firefighters came up from LA gave us like another 500 uh there was firefighters from the east coast that came all the way here uh from all over the place to now we're up to like I think it's like 1500 which was the goal uh to start trying to contain we only had like 500 initially uh firefighters locally that were were trying to put this out so um yeah dude chaos i mean it's just it's it's a lot dude and and so we just i tried to make lemonade out of the whole thing and took the whole family to uh down to cambria and and tried to make a little mini like vacation away from all the smoke and stuff uh which was great it's a great little town like dog friendly is nice and everything (laughs) but uh we went down to to morro bay to to kind of like do something for the day and we're out there and like i'm walking the dogs and, and my son's walking like uh, our little wiener dog. And I guess like he started like to take a shit like on the side of the, the, the road. So this is in the dirt. And we were just looking at like this little, like a nautical museum thing. And we're walking in this, this lady in this convertible just like starts yelling yelling at us and yelling like you didn't pick up your dad's poop you didn't pick it like yelling at us like this total karen like dude she's poking she's poking the bear <laughs> oh my god i almost lost my shit dude like that's like i was holding all together I was, this whole thing everybody's like really like emotional like oh we're not gonna see our house again and all this stuff and i'm just like hold it together dude hold it together <laughs> like i can't like 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 let this go i'm never going to get it back you know I'm just, like, <laughs> just holding it like trying not to say i'm like okay lady okay move on so like, no, you got to pick up your pup you got to pick up your dog's pup and then i was just like all right dog police you know you go ahead and park we got it covered you know thanks for the uh, uh citizens or you know uh, arrest here uh and then like to top it off we start walking away, and then she parks, whatever. And all of a sudden, so once a year, just once a year, right? Just once, uh, they have a like blood curdling siren that because this is right next to this like it almost looks like a nuclear plant. I don't know if you've been to Morro Bay, but there's like this this big plant with smokestacks and everything right there. It sounded like it was a nuclear meltdown that happened. Like it, we were right next to the speakers that were like. Oh my God. Like immediately after this, right? And I'm I'm up here. 
Like my my like level of stress is like here, right? And this fucking <laughs> oh horn literally blew like the like me in half. Like I just like ah, <laughs> and then my kids are crying, you know. And I'm like, no, it's okay, buddy. Like we're we're not gonna die, you know. This is just a test. This is just a test. And then we're and then they're like, and then Courtney's like, is this gonna happen again in half an hour? <laughs> I'm like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Here, you know and then oh my god dude and so we just went and hid behind the uh the, the mountain that they have there and went to the beach and then it went off again and i'm just like oh my god like i'm shaking right now just because like oh it, it just was like this this assault of just ah, like everything oh in the world was, was attacking me wow this weekend so getting, it, was, it was fun we're getting tested I yeah. do. You know I feel like that. How yeah. far until they crack? Hopefully your baby shower wasn't this dramatic. You know, huh? it was. We, Justin and I went through it this week. No, we, sure. I got to breathe a little bit. No, here. we had, we had, a, we had a. Yeah, it was a good one. We, we, but we did the whole staggered time schedule so that there were no more than you know, you know, a few people in the house at any given moment. Did the social distancing. You know, shout out to Jessica. She organized it exceptionally well. But got to see some family members and, and some friends and. You know that was really cool to 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 see people celebrating that, and it was nice. That was a good that was a good a good part to the weekend. But nice, you were on a my win. you were on my mind a lot, uh, yeah. Justin. I was thinking a lot about 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 you guys, and that's hilarious. <laughs> I can't believe. That. I mean, it, it, there's got to be a point too where you do you just say like we just got to fucking laugh about this. It's yeah. getting so ridiculous that I'm yeah. just going to laugh about it, and, and we'll figure out we'll figure out what what's going to happen. And it's the only thing I can do at this point, you know, oh, it's man. just like it, everything's been difficult, but you know, it's just life, dude. Like this is this is what happens. Well, you know, to put things in perspective or to help, I think, and this is not to diminish any challenge that you guys are going through, or anybody else is going through. But I was read this article and somebody born they were trying to put things in perspective right because a lot of people are feeling it right now and the article said someone born in the year 1900 will have lived through the spanish flu which was a terrible yeah. pandemic i killed millions yeah. and millions and millions of people um they lived through the great depression world war one and world war two so in their lifetime they would have gone through all those un like like those are some hard people. Right yeah, there. some like world ending. Yeah, events. what age would you? What age is that? So do the times again. Like, well, so it would who, have been. I don't know what the dates are. Like you would you would have had to have been born when to have the nineteen hundred. So nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. You would have lived through the Spanish flu pandemic, uh, the Great Depression, World War One, World War Two. Imagine those people. <sighs> Good Lord. Well, I mean, that's why tough they, as nails. That's why yeah. you think we're pussy. Tough as, yeah, we no. are so soft. That's I exactly mean, what it is. Yeah, everybody's soft. Yeah, right? well, I mean, you have you uh, you end up rising to the to the occasion. I think is what ends up happening, right? Yeah. It's like I talk. I tell my I talk to my grandfather about you know how he grew up. And I I can't believe some of the stuff that he went through. You know, ten years old, eleven years old, leaving his house for a couple of days so he could go make money to bring home. You know, yeah. can you imagine that at ten years old? Yeah, yeah. you got to go and hustle, sell potatoes or whatever. <laughs> Crazy. You know, to do that kind of stuff. So, I mean, not to diminish, of course, any of the challenges, but uh, in my lifetime, you know, this is the, I've never experienced something that's felt this this big, you know what I mean? With the pandemic, the shutdowns, um, now the fires and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is the, I, 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 I could easily say, aside from personal stuff, <clears throat> this is one of the harder, more difficult things. And well, the the fire, sure. the fires really aren't that crazy because it's just crazy for us, right? Because we're there, it's affecting us. Because California lights up almost every year like this. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's just that it happens to be in our neighborhood. It's finally right? reached us. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, this is not the worst uh, fire. California being on fire, we've ever dealt with. No. California's been on uh, on more fire before, so it's. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, this is not the worst. It just happens to be hitting us personally oh, and i'll so tell you, you what though like uh toyota can go to hell because uh they have a, they have a commercial out where it's like you know it's like recapping all of like the fires and we're gonna do our part by planting trees <laughs> and like my wife starts crying you know? <laughs> i'm like you assholes and it kept repeating you know I'm like oh we don't need to see this why you gotta remind us <laughs> you know, everybody's house is burnt down you know I'm just like how dare you yeah this is like well, a, oh you're gonna do some tree planning thanks <laughs> thanks toyota thanks toyota this, this is a good market. job this is a good marketing opportunity let's oh, go to commercial exactly like what opportunist assholes you yeah. know what i was gonna ask is so i i think i saw this on a a, a movie here a tv show do you know if there's people, Justin, who or Sally, either one of you guys know this, 
Like, uh, like if I think when the this the show was like Hollywood Hills were burning. Oh, Subaru, by the way. Is that oh, uh, Subaru? Not yeah. some like, yeah. like uber rich Sorry, people. Toyota. Uber rich people will will contract like a pi- a private like fire team to come protect their house and shit. sure. Oh, yeah. So do you, does that happen? You think that happens? That's a real thing. I well, I, um, I saw it. On, I think on a on a, a show. A that movie. was down in L.A. I remember seeing that. Yeah, but are you sure you saw that? Or did you see the same show I did? Okay, maybe that was. Your yeah, because I think it was in a movie or a show. The morning show. Is that what it was? The in? morning show. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, Doug. thank uh, you. Doug. We got bamboo. Yeah, so it yeah. was in a show, but it made me think. Like I, I don't know though. That probably, probably have their own private fire brigade. Why couldn't that happen? I, I mean, you can have uh, private security. You yeah, know, why right. wouldn't you be able to have someone? A you know, come up and. Help create borders around yeah, the property. If, you, if you've got a you know thirty million dollar home up yeah. in the Hollywood Hills, what's freaking contracting ten thousand dollars out to a a fire team to come you know protect mm-hmm. your house for mm-hmm. the for the well, day? It's or just two. crazy too. And, that, and my heart goes out to these people that like that I feel like they're they're losing everything. You know, like I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, well, insurance and this and that and the other. There's people still trying to fight to keep their house, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to stop this. Like, it's it's like once it gets that big, you're not going to stand in front of your house and like just With hose, hose it down. So I was going to ask you that too, of how many people. So my my best friend's dad, so up where I grew up in Don Pedro, there's their their mandatory evacuation. Now his dad stood stayed behind, it wouldn't leave. Now his dad, his whole life fought fires. Mm-hmm. So he had a uh, they uh, he moved dirt for a living, right? So backhoe and grading was his his business, and so he's got like six backhoes, and he used to make bank every year going off and fighting fire. So he's he's the one who would bulldoze the big dirt mounds uh, to stop the fire from jumping over and keep going and uh-huh. moving moving all kinds of brush. So he was told to to a mandatory vac, and so were all his neighbors. And he stayed behind and said, "Fuck that! I'm firing up the bulldozer." And went and like bulldozed all around their their houses to to try and protect all the homes up there. I mean that's cool. I know. Right? I hope he's okay. I hope he stays okay. But yeah. also, there's the wind. It, you know, if the wind catches it. It'll go jump right over. Yeah, all it was a, that. there was a fire tornado. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah. There well, was a I mean, fire tornado. Part of the whole thing. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Did yeah. anybody catch a video of that? That would be wild. Bro, to see. Uh, just yeah. a, a just a tornado, <laughs> but it's made out of fire. As if a tornado is not bad enough. This is a tornado that's that's lit on fire. Yeah, and there were there, it was happening. Like this is what's that? What's that last book in the Bible? <laughs> Revelation. Okay, so what's yeah. what's what does it say is supposed to happen? <laughs> yeah, pretty soon here he's coming well, down on a horse. We like, haven't had boils yet, so I feel like that's, that's you know up what I mean. There. Yeah, it, it, you know, next in the cards. Yeah, so it, I mean, is, but again, is it because we're all we've all had such easy times for so long that this just seems so crazy? I think or? so. I think it's I think it's inevitable. You know, it's, it's cyclical. Like you, you get you get like easy times, you get fun time, and then you get the the shit. It, you know, mm-hmm. and you got to deal with it. Well, I so here's some good news. Okay, so you know our friend Marlon, yeah, trainer. Anyway, great trainer. Um, I should look up his Instagram. Maybe someone can find it. Uh, it's did, his name, Marlon Shamel. Yes, but his is, is that just his Instagram? I believe it's like Marlon underscore Shamel or something. Yeah. Like that, anyway, he's a he's a oh no Shamel underscore oh. fitness. His name is Marlon. Great trainer. Really knows his stuff. Love the guy. Because of this, the, the gyms closing down and all that stuff. And here's the thing: we've been talking about this a long time for trainers. You know, uh, you need to pivot, right? Pivot, and because the demand for fitness and health hasn't decreased, but you can't necessarily use gyms like you did before in a lot of different areas or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he did that. He loaded up the back of his car with equipment, kettlebells and bands, and and you know, uh, suspension trainers. And he started to pivot, and he's doing better now. That's so awesome. He's doing better now than he was when gyms were open. And he's going full on. That's the way he's doing it. Yeah, I have another example. Grace Barga reached out, and she started doing what we had explained in terms of like offering sort of like education uh, for kids and like like structuring the whole thing around like physical education. And uh, there's high demand for that right now and is, is doing well with that. So yeah. I was like happy to hear that. So another friend of mine, this was a, um, a young lady, Ashley, who's uh, good friends with Jessica. And she came and she's also on the side. She's also a baker. So she made some like cupcakes and stuff. But she's a personal trainer uh, as well. She's really good. And um, we were talking about this, and she was talking about how she's going to start training people in their homes to try and pivot. And so we're having this conversation. I, of course, referred her to NCI. I said this, they are really, really good at helping people do the online coaching thing through nutrition and all that stuff. So we had that whole conversation. But I was explaining to her, I know it's a little scary, especially if you've always worked in gyms, 
but um, I now know at least a dozen trainers and friends of mine who pivoted and not only were able to pivot, but are doing better than they were when they were in the gyms because now they're working in people's homes and people still want that. And and one of the, the market demands is like what you said, Justin, there's a lot of kids who are being educated at home because they can't go to school. Mm -hmm. um, and some parents are organizing small pods where there's three or four kids together. And they're looking for trainers to take the kids through like, you know, twice a week PE class mm -hmm. or whatever. And yeah. a personal trainer with experience is more than qualified yeah. to do PE. Sorry, they are better. They yeah, are. I, just say yeah, better. I don't want to say that because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I know, but they are. But they are more than qualified <laughs> yeah. to do. I'll say it. To do that, you know what I mean? To do PE or whatever. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, so my son, right? He's doing. He has to do uh, distance learning too. So he, I, I'm downstairs, and I hear like. Just a huge ruckus upstairs, right? That's an old man word, by the way. Ruckus. <laughs> I feel like, a ruckus. Yeah, I feel like that's what old, old, old men say that word. Yeah. But anyway, I hear a ruckus. I'm like, what the hell is that? So I go up there. I knock on his door, open it, and he's jumping uh, in his room and then getting down and doing push-ups and what? then jumping and then doing knee tucks and all sort of stuff. So I'm like, either he's all of a sudden become obsessed with fitness or- Someone gave him a shitty workout. Like someone just gave him a workout. <laughs> so sure enough, it was a shitty workout. Oh, so no. the school had them gave them access to this app, which is one of your generic oh my god dumb fitness apps that you know how do all the how all, how Hit do all fire. of them yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> first of all. I know my son. The last thing he should do is circuit training. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's he's an ectomorph. He's like gonna dad. he's gonna disappear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He shouldn't be doing tons of you know circuits. But anyway, it's like every other you know generic fitness app, right? It's designed to make to be hard. Yeah. So I'm I'm like, let me see that app. What are they making? So this is from the school. They're like, do this app, do this workout. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So I looked at the app and I looked at the workout and it was like thirty jumps, you know, sixty five push ups. 50 squats, no rest, like just a oh just a ridiculous God. circuit of just hard exercises. So I'm like, all right, dude, we need to we need to fix it. Let's this. structure this. Yeah, I'm like, that's not going to do you any good. I'm like, let's email your. So uh, was that sent to them as like an option, or no. was that? Oh, they had to do. They were that's what you have to do. What? As far as uh, yeah, for their PE. Now I imagine as a parent, you could email in and say, "Listen, my son's not going to do this bullshit. He's going to train in the garage with me, and then I'll send you guys over." I don't word it like that because I'm sure they. <laughs> Hey, hey guys! That's all I would. Hey guys, this is bullshit. No, I didn't say it like that. Yeah. I said um, so. We sent an email. I had him send it, and it basically said, "Hey, coach, so and so, um, my dad, you know, Sal De Stefano, is a personal trainer with over twenty years of experience. He also hosts uh, the podcast Mind Pump. I made sure to put that in there. A little, you know, you got to do a little, you know, right, plug. Right, right. Yeah, a little yeah. plug for dad. Yeah. You might want to listen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Check, check that out, coach, just so you know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and he said, "Can my dad train me?" Uh, with an individualized workout based on my body, my fitness goals, uh, instead of following this app, which seems to be just generic. generic to most people. And they said yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was happy about that. But you should, to my, you know, it's funny. I go upstairs and I see good. him doing all this crap. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Why, why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was either going to be happy or angry. Like, happy that, oh, he's super into fitness finally. Yeah. You know, yeah. or angry yeah. that he's following some crappy ass workout. So, where are you at, Sal? With, so one of the last times we talked about your son and what's going to happen this year, I mean, you're you're paying for private school still. Are you going to do that? With the, are they going to be home all this year? Like, what is the plan? It's up in the air. It's, it's still it's up in the air. Um, so it's more it's more challenging for my son than it would be for my daughter, right? Because right. my daughter is in fifth grade, and it, it you know if I pull her out and do homeschool or whatever, it's it's not that big of a deal. Because he's in high school, um, and because he's. Uh, a very academic kid, so he gets very, very good grades. He's a, he's a you know three point five or higher high classes. The school itself makes a difference if he decides he wants to go to a uh, particular college or whatever. Now we've had the discussions about college, and this, you know typically what we you know this is what we talk about. We'll sit down and say, okay, what are your likes? What do you think you want to do? Um, let's figure out the cost of college. Is it worth going to? Because in my opinion, he'll probably be able to get into a lot of colleges because of his grades and his extracurricular activities. Right, right. And I said, look, if, if, if you want to learn, you know, if you want to major in English or art history, 
it's not going to be worth the investment. And I show him why. Not just I don't just say, I'm dad's not going to pay for it. I literally say, first of all, I'm not going to pay for it. This will be your first time, uh, you know, learning the responsibility of debt, um, and which I think is a valuable lesson for a kid. What a great way to learn that, right? So let's look at the cost. Let's look at what your potential earnings will be for what field you want to get educated in. Is that going to make sense? Or do you think you, it would make sense to go community college, state college, or whatever? So we do that whole you know conversation. Because he's so deep into science and math, and because he wants to do things related to those fields, it still seems to be worth uh, going to you know uh, higher education for those things. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you know it starts to make sense. However, we are looking into. Remember a few episodes ago, I talked about these certification courses. Yes. That Google is Google. doing. Yeah, yeah. Dude, is that, Apple doing those yet, or any other uh, major uh, company? I don't know, but I know Google's is, and it's like IT expert and tech management, and there's a few of them. Graphic design. Graphic. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, you go to Google and you pay monthly to get these certification courses, which are between three to six months. Yeah. So three to six months, you graduate, and it's very specified. One of my biggest critiques of uh, education, especially when you get to college, is why am I taking racquetball and this other stuff when I want to learn you know, computer Music engineering? Music theory. Yeah, or when I want to learn this. Like, well, that was a great class. That doesn't make any sense. It's supposed to prepare me for the workforce, right? doesn't make any sense. Well, these are very spec- you know, specified. They're like 60, 70, 80 bucks a month, three to six months. And Google and there's a handful of other companies that will consider that certificate equivalent to a four-year degree. Yeah. So what we're looking at is potentially having him do that anyway, and then either it'll complement his uh, his higher education or, I mean, think about it. You get that <clears throat> Google considers it a four-year degree. You go work Don't at Google. Don't get yourself in like insane debt. Yeah, you go to work at Google. You kick ass for four years instead of spending you know a hundred thousand dollars at an expensive right. college. Now you've got all this experience. Of course, you're going to have to work your ass off. It's not like you just go work at Google and then whatever. you got to go bust your ass. Now you've got experience on top. What's worth more? I love that. Yeah, think about that. Right? Now, when you're having awesome. this conversation with him, it, uh, you guys are talking about you know potential degrees and what you know jobs that you could take. Like, is he is he oblivious to this? Is he surprised by what like you're showing him? Like, What's the reaction you're getting from him when you look at like, oh, if you were to do this degree, here are the possible avenues that you can go and this is a this is the average income this person makes like is he like oh shit i didn't realize that or no it- no he's actually he'll say things like okay well that makes sense or hmm you know i could see why not going but working hard and, and getting experience might be more valuable so you know they're good they're good conversations you know yeah. you know one of the big things i think one of the big misunderstandings uh, or should i say sometimes statistics are very misleading like they're, they're true statistics but they're extremely misleading. For example, like that if you go to a school degree, you make average of whatever. It's just a generic. Well, that, right. That's that a very good one. Yeah. Right. Because you could look this up right now. How much more does the average four year degree yeah, uh, that's a, that's earn a, that's versus a terrible stat to go by? Right? right. Versus somebody who doesn't go to college. So if you look at that up, the average a person who gets a four year degree will make you know X amount tens of thousands of dollars more than someone who just graduates from high school. Yeah, it's like 20% more. But the problem with that is you're not comparing... What you need to do is compare people who didn't go to uh, college, but who were very focused and who worked... And who want and who you know either entrepreneurs because what ends up happening is you end up lumping them in with people who just graduate high school and then go fuck off right right and and you have a bit of a self selection bias with people who actually went and got a degree because at the very least they're more dedicated to doing something so what you should do is compare people who didn't go to college but then who went and went to a trade school or got a job and stayed consistent and or became entrepreneurs compare them to the people who went and got a degree, and then you can make more of a fair Well, your son is a perfect Mm -hmm. example of why that's a terrible stat, because if you were to take your son who is uh, self-motivated, disciplined, intelligent, you know, 
he if he does not go to college and you compare him to a kid who just he went through school fucked off with a 1.2 GPA and never went to school and did school and he, and you're comparing those two kids what they would do outside of high school they're they're going to handle it completely different totally you know? so it's not a fair stat to compare compare another kid who was motivated versus comparing to some kid who probably didn't show up to school well look I, I didn't go to college but but I it wasn't like I didn't go I didn't do anything I didn't go to college became a personal trainer and worked hard, performed very well, managed gyms, owned gyms, owned my own facility, and of course now, you know, led to Mind Pump, zero debt the entire, not only zero debt, but earning money the whole time in, you know, if had I been smarter about investing, I would have been even better set, you know, uh, better set up. I did some investing or whatever. So you compare me to some kid who went and got a, you know, a, a $50,000 degree in, you know, I don't know, art history or English, nothing necessarily wrong with those, but I guarantee if they got a job earning money, it wasn't in that field. Yeah. yeah I know a lot of people like that who got yeah. a degree and then they went and got a job doing something else. My sister, she has an anthro anthropology degree. She's in tech. That degree was, she didn't even use it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. First question is from Eden Mass. What is your opinion on gymnastic rings? Mm. Love them. Yeah. Absolutely love them. They're great tools for body weight strengthening exercises really they are uh they were they're like suspension trainers before suspension trainers mm -hmm. were ever invented um the stability the balance the angles that you can use the thing about rings and things like suspension trainers that i love the most is if you know how to utilize them properly and you set them up in a particular way they are appropriate for anybody they're appropriate for super beginners because you can change the leverage and the angles to make exercises really easy, or if you're super advanced, and I don't care how strong you are, how advanced you are, you can use rings or suspension trainers to challenge your body to build muscle, get stronger, build stability. So they're, they're extremely versatile pieces of equipment. I've used uh, a few different versions of the suspension trainers. I kind of got into it, uh, doing it for the entire year, and I would say that, that the rings are probably the most advanced version uh, that you could use for suspension training. What's cool about it is they've actually taken it, you know, because you used to only be able to do Olympic rings that were hanging down from the ceiling uh, from these gymnastic centers, and that was like your only option to get exposed to them. And then somebody, you know, had the brilliant idea to make, you know, them straps, independent straps, and then you could kind of tighten them up and raise them up and, and lower them down and hang them off of things. And what's cool about them is so they're they're independent of each other. And so that that's really where a lot of the extra challenge comes because uh, with these other types of suspension trainers, there's one central uh, part of it that has like two different straps that are still attached to the same thing, which gives you just a little bit more stability than two independent ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's the difference between the rings and it's just, I thought they both had that. So they don't have that. Well, because it only allows for so much uh, slack with with like a suspension trainer like a TRX or like why like one of those types where uh like it it it's only it gives you about like a two inch kind of slack. So yeah, no, I'm familiar. Move. I'm familiar with the suspension trainer, but I didn't. I thought I just assumed that it's exactly the same, but with rings for the rings, it's not. They're actually they're, independent. They're both independent. Oh. Yeah, they're both independent. So you could you could set them up as wide as oh. you want or narrow as oh. you want. Oh, much more challenging because then they're they're uh, they, yeah because they're gonna get away from you. Oh wow! So you have to really overly stabilize mm -hmm. and really like really gain access to your core and control so it's i mean it's it's a kick-ass workout like it's something that i i actually worked my way up to doing moves with that where you're going upside down like skin the cat like you're doing uh these these types of like progressive moves where it's really challenging your shoulder mobility uh your your core strength and just overall abilities to uh, isometrically hold poses. So it's it's super challenging. I don't know why it's it's uh, totally slipped my mind. What's the name of the exercise where you pull yourself up and then press yourself? Uh, muscle up. Muscle up. Yeah. That's a that is a great. If you're advanced uh, and you've got good stability and mobility in your shoulders. So strict muscle up. Strict. Like, yeah. So like there's ways to kind of cheat your way with momentum and kind of throw yourself up to keep crossfit your way through life, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. We. I learned uh, at this one from a gymnastic coach how to do that uh, in that trans. It's a transitionary move, uh, which then sets you up for like the Iron Cross or something. Exactly. Yeah, talk about like talk about a full bot full upper body exercise. You're yeah. pulling uh -huh. and 
and then you tra- and then you you move into pushing. So it's like biceps, uh, you know, back, forearms, then it moves in shoulders, Tricep. uh, triceps, chest. Yeah. What a great exercise. It's a great goal for somebody oh, who man. is advanced. Front levers. Uh, this one called like ice cream scooper, like where you're like upside down and kind of like rocking. Dude, there's some crazy creative moves out there to do with these things that are like, will test your body to the limits. Yeah. Dips on that is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's dip, the best. Yeah. Dips on that. Uh, it shits all over regular bar dips yeah. just in terms of how they feel. Mm-hmm. Next question is from BJ Ben Johnson. You guys often push to achieve performance goals over aesthetic goals. What are some performance goals that I could focus on achieving, such as greater mobility or strength goals? So we we talk a lot about performance goals because being performance-minded tends to, not always, but it tends to lead to healthier exercise practices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I say tends to because you can also make performance goals become unhealthy when you become obsessed. Yeah. You try to PR everything. Every yeah, just strength all the time. I need to get faster all the time and then you end up injuring yourself. But if you're smart about it, performance goals are a great way to move away from being body image obsessed. In fact, that was my number one strategy when I would have a client who struggled with body image, somebody who you know, weighed themselves all the time and always looked in the mirror and, you know, had a terrible relationship with themselves and with exercise. I would often tell them, don't weigh yourself anymore. Uh, don't look in the mirror and check your body out. Um, let's just focus on performance. And it typically would help move them into a, a healthier practice. Uh, the easiest thing to measure for performance, of course, is strength. This is a very easy one. Am I stronger than I was last week? The downside of that is that that is not linear and it's not forever. You can't forever increase your strength. Of mm-hmm. At some point, I mean, if that were the case, uh, everyone in this room would be bench pressing, you know, five thousand pounds by this point, right? Um, I it's, wish. You know, at some point it stops, and you end up getting plateaus, and it's not like a consistent. But strength is a good one because it's objective; it's easy to measure. There it is. Uh, Mobility is another great one. Can I go lower in the squat and with good stability? Um, can I do this shoulder press with better, more upright posture? Can I do this exercise that normally would bother me, but now I feel like I have control and stability in it? Mobility is great because it always treats you well. Um, as long as you don't get obsessed with flexibility, that's when you can get problems. Because remember, mobility is control and strength within flexibility. Um, so those are those are both really good ones. Well, strength is, uh, the, the I think, the most common one, right? Just in, add more load, but... Uh, it's not. It's definitely not even my favorite. And I had this. So this weekend, I had my family up, right? And we were all we all got a workout in one day. And you know, I had my uh, my mom's uh, new husband and my sister's uh, husband. So my brother in law were there, and they they've you know intermittently listened to the podcast, and they have some of the programs. And they were like, they had never had any one on one coaching for deadlifting and squatting from me. And they really wanted that. Like, can we just? go to the garage and like, can you critique my deadlift and talk to me? And so, you know, we spent like a couple hours in there just like really breaking down the deadlift and, you know, they felt that like they made like this huge improvement just from the the little bit of coaching that we had spent time with. And they're like, okay, well, and we were messing with like 135 is what we were deadlifting with, which is, you know, both of them are pretty strong guys. It's relatively easy. And they're like, you know, so, you know, should we add more weight to the bar or when should we do that? I said, no, there's so many other ways for us to progressively overload before you just start adding weight. And so I talked to them about tempo. I talked to them about isometrics. I talked to them about speed. I said, stay at this weight for several months. I mean, discipline yourself to do what we, what I, the, the, the rep range and the tempo that I'm talking to you about right now for like at least a month, a month and a half. And then when you feel like that's become really easy, then let's slow down the the tempo really, really slow. Mm-hmm. And then when you feel like that that's become really easy, then let's work on speed in that. So now you're like three, four months down. You're still at the same exact weight, 135, which you think is still easy for you, but there's other things that you can work on. And so I was telling them about like the movement of it. Like, do not look at exercises like, oh, I can do it. So now let's add more weight. You should have a desire to want to make it beautiful and perfect. Like this was what uh, I, I used to love to 
when I when I was a trainer and working out next to like some dude that I saw like muscling weight up, and I'd come over, especially when I was like lean and shredded and with my stringer and shit like that, looking all cool, right? And I walk over, and I would take like a quarter of the weight the person was moving and just move it slow and controlled mm-hmm. and get this great workout. It was a great way for me to attract new clients because people would be like, "What? How do you look like this and you move this light of weight?" And I said, "Because it doesn't. It's not all about weight all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not always about adding more load to the bar." Work on or the movement and work on perfecting it and making it look perfect. That in itself will take you a long time to mm-hmm. get, especially movements like the squat, like the deadlift, like the overhead press, like the bench press. I'm still working on that, you know, 20 years later of exor- exercise. Like, so instead of always thinking about either one, how you look in the mirror, or two, how strong it is. You know, try and get great at the movement. Yeah, Absolutely. I also, I love that. And uh, that that kind of reiterates what I was going to bring up, which is more of the unconventional side, um, which uh, I I love the Turkish getup for the fact that it's so technical. There's so many different aspects uh, that you have to master just to be able to perform it correctly and then to then sharpen everything to make it look pretty. And so to it's it's the ultimate way to get your body to communicate in unison. And so uh, that's one of those exercises performance wise. Uh, if you think you've mastered some of these like compound lifts, which I doubt, uh, that's something that too to add into the mix to really then challenge uh, your body in a completely different way uh, to make sure that your movement is is just superior. It's on par. You're, you're able to uh, express all the strength that you've acquired uh, correctly and be able to manage it so you're not overdoing it on one side. You're not over rotating. You're not compensating anywhere. It's going to expose all those things. The other one was uh, a windmill. And so th- th- this is because, you know, personally, it's my passion to, to bring to light the fact that you need to rotate and you need uh, to rotate, especially in your spine and your shoulders. You know, you need to be able to express these joints to, to rotate or you lose that ability. That creates problems. It creates arthritis, it creates pains, uh, and that's going to limit your performance in every other direction. So if you're going to if you're going to neglect that aspect of movement, you're going to suffer the consequences. Yeah, I, I also like. Like to uh, include in performance the feel. I know that's not a traditional thing that we consider when we think about performance, but you can continue to challenge how an exercise feels. So I'm doing this right now. I've, I've slowed down my repetitions. I'm making sure to do a four or five second negative, and I'm also pausing at the squeeze. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to feel the target muscle more than I did the previous workout. So even though I'm like stronger and like I can add weight, no, I'm going to see if I can do the same amount of reps I did last time, but feel it more, feel it in the muscle more. So this is more of a bodybuilding performance uh, measure, I would say, but it's a really, really good one. Um, And you can have a lot of fun with it. The carryover from being able to feel and exercise more is tremendous. It's absolutely, especially if you're trying to build your body in particular ways, if you can slow, for example, your squat down and squeeze your glutes and connect your glutes more, and rather than adding weight, you know, because here's the temp, the, the, the temptation is, you know, last week I did eight reps with X amount of weight. This week, uh, wow, eight reps feels easy. I can add weight. Instead of doing that, you know what I'm going to do? Next set, I'm going to see if I can make eight reps feel just as hard as it did last week by squeezing and stretching and connecting to the muscles even more. That's the challenge. Can I make it 12 weeks without adding a pound to my weight, even though I get stronger, simply by changing the feel of the exercise and making it feel more difficult? I, I don't know if it's like the trainer in me, so I don't know if you guys agree with this or not, but when, I, when I'm when i inside a gym and there's lots of people working out, I'm always drawn to somebody who I just, when I see them moving like the weight like beautifully, like that's more impressive to me mm-hmm. than somebody who's got more weight on the bar than I can lift. Mm. If I look over at somebody and I'm like, oh damn, that squat or that deadlift just looks clean. I mean, it just looks perfect. There's no breakdown anywhere. They could be doing that with moderate to light weight, and I'm more impressed with that than just seeing somebody muscle up a crazy weight that maybe I can't even lift. Like, that's not, there's some people that are just gifted and naturally strong. That they first time they touched a bar, they were already up to bench pressing over 300. I have a little cousin like this. I remember when he came to work at the gym for me when he's 17 years old, and the little fucker was bench pressing more than I had bench pressed after eight years of lifting. <laughs> you know, and so insulting. Yeah, it is right, and it's, it's so. There's people that are just gifted. They're just they're they're strong, or their body type works really well with movement. So sometimes it can lift really good weight. 
but it takes years of practicing a movement, especially a compound movement that's complex or like a Turkish get up, like Justin said. If I see someone doing a windmill or a Turkish get up and it looks flawless, they could have 10 pounds over their head. And yeah, I'm impressed. Definitely. Like that movement to do it really smooth and perfect is, you know, that person has put in a lot of time and work to perfect that. And that to me is more impressive than the person who just lifts, you know, 50% more than the person next to him. Yeah, that, no, that ain't I, a big deal. I'm with you on that. I still get impressed by a lot of weight, but yeah, the form stuff. I remember uh, training a, a gymnast once and she was doing leg raises and, you know, when people do a leg raise, right, they pick their legs out and then you have to tuck the tailbone, kind of do that river scrunch. She, when she did the leg raise, her toes were pointed, feet together, and she just folded up so nicely into this massive, like, river, but real control. I remember yeah. looking at me like, man, I need you to teach me how to do that. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. Next question is from Michael M247365. If you were okay. programming a full body routine, what primary exercises would you build it around and how would you rotate in other accessory exercises? Now, this is someone, I picked this question and I only picked it because it had like 17 or 20 likes. So mm -hmm. it would, because I feel like, don't we talk about this? Do you this? listen to the yeah, show? Yeah, I'm like, don't we yeah. talk about this all the time? And uh, every single program is built um, around this. I felt like we addressed this, but again, if there's that many people that are liking it, I feel like that many people need to hear it again that I think, all, and I had this same conversation this weekend with my family is there are certain movements that I think should be staples and, in, and stay in your routine forever. And that's like the big, the big four or five, you know, that you're talking squat, your deadlift, your overhead press, your bench press, a barbell row, like those, those five movements, I don't think ever should leave your routine. I mean, there's so much that you can do with manipulating tempo and rep ranges and rest periods mm -hmm. that you can still make it feel novel, but and it, it's so complex and it gives you such a big bang for your buck that it should remain in there. And then all the other little things uh, is what we're rotating every four to six yeah. weeks. And I'll add a few exercises to that. I think uh, a pull-up and a dip uh, belong in mm -hmm. that. I think uh, a windmill belongs in that because it's uh, it's a it's a type of rotation i think some type of a split stance lower body exercise like a lunge belongs in that and i do think some kind of a lateral movement probably belongs in that whether you're doing a a sled pull and you're walking sideways mm -hmm. or you're doing like a lateral lunge or a cossack squat probably belongs in there um so you've got all your bases covered if you do all those exercises i mean the big movers, the big muscle builders, the big bang for your buck, speed up the metabolism, build muscle exercises are the ones that, you know, that Adam named, right? Your bench, deadlift, squat, overhead press, barbell row, like those always are going to be the exercises that build uh, the most muscle, but they don't, they're not complete, right? There's no rotation in those movements. Um, There's no unilateral in there. That's there, where, you know, if you follow the RGB, like so the red, green, and black. Yeah, MAPS anabolic, mass performance, MAPS aesthetic. You, you hit, got all of it. You hit all of that. Yeah. And that's the, uh, you know, I remember when that we- That was the point of it all. Right. I remember when we first wrote performance that it didn't have as, it didn't sell as well as black and red did when we first launched, but I can't uh, can't make the case enough for why that belongs in the rotation because of what Sal is talking about right now, mm -hmm. is that program puts a ton of emphasis on multi-planar movements and then also rotational type of exercises and also unilateral type moving and even some yeah. explosive stuff, which I think those things do belong somewhat in the rotation. But even then, it, that, that program doesn't get away from any of the big lifts that we're talking about. All those big lifts are also there. Inclu yeah. included in that. That's right. And the best that, the best workouts include those uh, those exercises. You really can't replace them. Now, you can find exercises that work the same muscles. Um, you can find machines that work the same muscles. But you can't replace uh, a barbell squat. You just can't. You can't replace a row. Um, there's nothing that'll replace that. Anything you try to replace a row with is a row of some sort, right? Yeah. An overhead press. You can't replace an overhead press. You have to do an exercise with the resistance where you reach up above your head. There's nothing to replace that. And any machine uh, that, to tr that attempts to do so is going to result in less strength, less muscle, less results. And yeah. even any combination of machines, you can find... Find me the next four most effective leg exercise machines, and those four combined 
yeah. are not going to give you the same results as just the squat. Well, there's bar. always going to be people out there trying to argue for different points of, yeah, of like different types of uh, machines that have just as much impact and this and that and the other. It just reminds me of the conversation we had with like, I think it was Max Schmarzo where he's talking about the, the, the sauna and, and you know, the benefits of the sauna is that it's an exercise like emulator. Like it's, it, it heats up the core temperature of the body, it makes the body think that it's done, you know, work, but it has not. And yeah. so, you know, you may get like a, a fraction of the benefits from it, but you're not going to get it unless you actually do the real thing. Right. It's like supplements. Okay supplements uh, can have some value, but they can never replace food. They just can't. There's, it just will never, I'm dealing with this with, with Jessica, right? So she's third trimester and she's not anemic, but she's moving in that direction. Very common for pregnant women. Yeah. So the doctor's like, let me recommend some iron uh, pills for you. And I mean, it's the, the gentle iron and all that stuff. And she right. takes, but it's, you're like, let's eat some steak. But yeah. well, it's not absorbing <laughs> as much. She has to take more of it to get the same impact. Plus, iron supplements cause their own side effects, like constipation. They can cause other issues. So instead, what we're you know what we're doing most days is I'll make her uh, organ meats. We make liver, chicken liver, very high in iron. You know what's funny? She needs less iron from chicken liver to get her iron to stabilize or go up than she does from an iron pill. Like she needs twice as much iron in an iron pill to get her iron levels to respond hmm. like half as much iron from food, not to mention all the other nutrients and stuff like that. So think of those core exercises like we just talked about as whole foods and everything else is a, is a supplement. Well, really, and, that's the comparison. And a lot of that is why, aside from why they're so great, and, I, and to back to Justin, because I want to make sure we drill this home because there is a camp uh, of you know smart coaches too. A lot of good, they're, they're good coaches. That are out there that are you know touting other movements besides the squat and the deadlift and telling people like this one activates just as much muscle and you can build just as much quads and that's very appealing to people that you know look at the squat and deadlift and they're intimidated by it or they have a hard time with it and they hear like oh this great intelligent coach that's saying you know you could do a hack squat and build as much muscle as a barbell squat but part of what makes those movements so great is the fucking learning curve is that it's difficult and is that if it, if you're bad at it, it's telling you something. It's telling you that you've got breakdown somewhere, that mm -hmm. you've got areas that you need to work on, whether it be a mobility or an imbalance somewhere that you need to address. And a good goal for everybody should be, even if you can't do those movements, is to get to the place where you can do those movements. That's what makes them so valuable. Anybody can get in a hack squat. Anybody can get in there, put their slide in the, their, their shoulders underneath the machine, unlatch it, and drop down and go back up. Anybody can do that. But what it's hard about something like that is it doesn't show the breakdown. It doesn't expose you. It doesn't. It doesn't have a massive learning curve. It's very easy just to get in and start doing. It. And that's what the the appeal for so many people is. What can I do besides those movements that gives me as much muscle or burns as much calories? And it's mm -hmm. like no, that that's the wrong reason to avoid those movements do those movements if you're not good at those movements figure out how to get good at those movements and you'll get so much bang for your buck you know who's been the, the who has been on the receiving end of that that type of uh, incorrect or uh, inaccurate information the worst women women's workout programs for a long we're starting to see some changes now partially because crossfit popularized these exercises generally but also for women and partially i think because Women uh, obviously are smart and are realizing if I follow the workout that's not that doesn't say specifically for women, I'll probably get better results. But they've been on the receiving end of this bullshit for so long, where you look at these workouts that are designed for women, and there isn't a single deadlift, yeah. a single barbell squat, or a single barbell overhead press or barbell row, and it's like that is terrible. That's mm -hmm. so dumb. You're totally missing out. It's gonna get to your, you're just gonna get to your goals way slower, or maybe never at all. Right. Next question is from Tyler Mick Nutrition. What are your thoughts on boot camps? I'm a trainer who focuses more on one-on-one -on -one training, but there are other trainers in my own gym who do more hit group training. My concern is that the average person has high stress and performing these high intensity exercises is only exacerbating that. I'm supposed to be taking over some of those classes, but I worry that they are doing more harm than good. Oh, one of the biggest struggles mm. with being a trainer, I'm gonna tell you right now, is reconciling your integrity with some of the stuff that you may be asked to do. So like you may be working in a gym that says you need to sell 
a thousand dollars worth of these supplements every single month, or you may be in a situation where you have ten people requesting that you teach them in a class setting. Um, and your integrity tells you that you can't possibly train each person in a class as good as you can if you train them one-on-one. So it's a it's a bit of a struggle, but I'm going to help you out a little bit because I had this challenge myself. I used to own a personal training facility, a wellness facility, and in the early years of it, I would do classes like this and I, I would be in the same position. I would think to myself, man, I got you know 10 or 15 people in this class and it's impossible for me to tailor – the entire workout for each individual person. That's personal training. It'll never work in an hour-long class. Am I doing the right thing? Well, here's how I reconciled with it. There's two things that I did. One is I really focused more heavily on the programming based around mobility. I think mobility has uh, more of a general application for group than hard workouts do. Hard workouts it's it's you you might give the wrong person the, the the wrong workout whereas with mobility you're more likely to be able to, to give everybody a positive result so i would do more of an emphasis on mobility here's the second thing group training typically is a far lower expense than personal training right the average class might cost your one of your your people you know 15 or 20 dollars for the class whereas hiring you as a trainer might cost anywhere between 60 to 100 dollars an hour you are re- you may be reaching people with a class that w- you would never reach with one on one. And what it ended up doing for me was it it gave me an opportunity. And this is how I this is how I view marketing for fitness as well. Sometimes I just got to get in front of you. And fine, I'll say the things that you might want to hear. But then when I get you in front of me, now I have an opportunity to help you in the right way. And so many times I would say at least seventy percent of the people that took my group classes at some point then hired me one-on-one and I was able to reach them. And those people I don't think would have reached out to me had I not offered uh, the group class. So that's, there's a couple, there's a couple ways that you can, you can. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because um, I know I've been on here before and I've said, um, I, you know, wish group training would die. Right. And I get, I, I, I offend everybody. <laughs> Every time you repeat that, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. group I, X instructor. Yeah, <gasps> I know. I have, I definitely offend uh, a lot of people when I say that. And I, I think Sal, you just, you made a really good point right now that I think is important that, um, that's where I could see this, right? Like this, I, I ha if I'm going to do group training for whatever reasons, right. Uh, that I have to know that the real intent of that is that, okay, my goal by doing this is to get a, a group of people that would not have signed up and paid $150 an hour with me um, because they don't think they need it and they just want to go to this class with their friend or whatever. But my intention is, you know, it, during this time with them is I, I need to convince them that they need more attention. They need that one-on-one attention from me. So if you use it with that intent, um, I think that's a great idea, and I and I could say I could see the value in that. But you, just like you uh, compared it to marketing, if you're using marketing tactics just to make money, and that's your your strategy is just to just convince more people to buy, 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 and you don't have pure intentions of trying to get them in to then reeducate them. I feel it's the same way. Mm -hmm. So if you're a trainer and you're like, oh, which is the way my brain worked back when I was doing boot camps, is oh shit, I could either make 150 an hour or I can make 400 an hour and have this class of 20 people that I'm charging a quarter of the price. Um, And that was the real initial motivation for me was more money and it was easier. And the part of me that stopped doing it was that I, I felt guilty. I was like, man, I got all these people I'm trafficking through this camp and I know I'm really not helping them through all these circuit based type of training. Now, I also think there's a, a, a thing that I, I you could teach. Like if I were to go back and let's say I was a trainer again and I, I, I was, you know, needed to make more income and there was this t- people that wanted a, a, a boot camp or a class type of setting of personal training, I 100% would run it almost identical to the MAPS Prime Pro webinar that I did a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what I eventually, so those that have been listening to the show for a long time have probably heard this if you're new. This is what I did for all the people that I used to boot camp. So for almost three years now, maybe more now, it's been on quite a while, um, I started to offer this Saturday class for free. And it was only to the people that I took through boot camps over the course of you know four or five years before that. 
And that was just me my, dealing with my own guilt, right? Guilt of just closing <laughs> everybody on coming in and doing circuit training and not giving them real value. And so I held this Saturday class and that Prime Pro webinar is literally that class. Like it was just, a, I took all, because most of the people that were attracted to this, these boot camp classes were 40 years old to 65 years old. Um, you know, engineers, lawyers, you know, uh, teachers, desk job people, like these were the people that I was attracting in their, you know, 40 plus years old. So chronic pain, poor movement. Yeah, they were out of shape. And so burning calories seemed like it was a good idea. But in reality, the things that were going to improve their life more than anything else was if I could get them greater range of motion in their hips and eliminate their low back pain. If I could get their ankle mobility going so they could sit down into a, a, a complete squat or work on their shoulder mobility so they weren't getting constant like tension headaches. Like these things were the things that I knew were starting to really impact and help all of them. And I I could take them through a class setting and, it, and it, I didn't feel like I was doing any harm to the other group. Like, so let's say I'm going through a, a web or I mean, a, um, a mobility class and I'm teaching 90, 90 and I've got somebody who can't do it whatsoever. And then I got somebody on the other end of the spectrum that they can do it easy. I'm not hurting the person that can do it really easy at all. It's still good for them. It's a good practice for them. And the ones that really need it, boy, is it a, a really good practice for them where when I'm teaching in a boot camp class where we have, 12 people doing uh, jump tucks or, you know, power lunges or something, there might be one or two people in the class that's appropriate for. Mm -hmm. And then the other eight to 10 of those people, it's totally not appropriate for. And I'm probably doing more harm than good. That's the part about the classes that I can't stand is inevitably, if you're running circuits, you got a percentage of people in there it is not good for. Even if there are some people it is good for, where if I take you through a mobility class, it's good for everybody, yeah. no matter what. I mean, that's the biggest thing is the intensity is going to get away from you really quick when you have that much of a diverse uh, crowd to deal with. Uh, and that's why I've always been apprehensive to do group training uh, myself. But, you know, if it definitely go through our prime programs and go through the webinar Adam did and, you know, the one I did even and, and just take elements of that and incorporate it in your group setting immediately if you can and really break it down. Uh, another suggestion I would have since if this is something you are going to be implementing and doing and you have integrity behind it, uh, you know, you can do things like squats and lunges and, and push ups. You just you can slow the tempo way, way, way down. OK, and what that's going to allow for you to do is even if you're if you're in a position where I'm doing a squat, but now I'm holding the bottom position, you can walk around and you can see where all these compensations are happening with, you know, the, your grossest mm -hmm. offenders. And you could just slightly alter and tell them, you know, the cues of like getting their shoulders back and, you know, tightening their core. And, you know, you could point these things out while you have them sort of paused in that position, kind of like what uh, this is the one thing that I do respect about like yogis and, and people out there that they it's it's really about like the, the form and the technique that matters and if you really just emphasize all of that and you're able to slow everybody down and uh, be able to account for people that might need the most help and you spot them out uh, you know you can still run a class where you give them a good workout and exercises but the mobility is is going to be such a high value that they're going to respond to that and, and and tell you like wow this made me feel great and so I highly suggest that. well and that's a good thing to say because I think sometimes trainers are afraid that if they don't train the people the way that they think they're supposed to be trained they're going to lose clients right. not true if you do this the right way you'll actually make more money. More people will show up longer. They'll come more consistently because you're training them appropriately and they'll feel the difference and tell people. One of the biggest misconceptions that we have in fitness is that uh, any movement or activity is better than no movement or activity, right? So I hear this all the time. Well, at least they're moving. Right. That's better than nothing. No, it's not. Yeah. Moving right is better than not moving. Moving wrong sometimes, many problems. times, is worse than, than not moving. So it's like you either sit on the couch all day long or you get up, move wrong, and hurt yourself. Which one was better? Mm -hmm. Obviously sitting on the couch and not doing the, the movement at all. So any movement is not better than no movement. The right movement is better than no movement. We need to hammer that into people because, again, we've got this mentality where it's like if I'm sweating and I'm sore and I'm moving, you know, it, it's still better than nothing, so it's okay. It's not a big deal. No, not true. This is how people hurt themselves. This is how people develop a bad relationship with exercise, burn themselves out, and they're actually worse off than if they had done nothing uh, at all. 
Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube. You can also find the four of us on Instagram. Now, Doug likes to post a lot about behind-the-scenes stuff. You want to learn about podcasting, what happens here at Mind Pump. Tech uh, Talk. Go check him out at Mind Pump Doug. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. You were misinformed that it's not mature to balance on that curb, or you know, I'll just climb that tree. So, no, we have we have things to do. We have I've got my watch here. I've got my my Apple cell phone. I got like I'm in alignment. I got my schedule, my agenda. Kids are like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like this is a play opportunity. What are you talking about? Like I don't want to leave right now.